Welcome back to another episode of Digging Deeper. What a privilege it is to study the scriptures together. You see there in front of you on the screen the text from our uh, recent Sunday morning sermon. That sermon is entitled Life in the Spirit Lived Out. And if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to that sermon, I would encourage you to go back and do so. But there was something in this passage that might be confusing and we didn't have time to get into it on Sunday and so I want to get into that on this episode of Digging Deeper. But first let us read the text here in front of us on the screen. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one of you looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But each one must examine his own work. And then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone and not in regard to another for each one will bear his own load. Generally speaking, we emphasized in this passage that Paul is describing here life by the Spirit, the life we have on account of the indwelling Holy Spirit in us, and the need for walking by the Spirit or being yielded to the Spirit. But then, what does that look like as it gets lived out in the congregation? And Paul emphasizes that we are to restore those caught in any trespass. It's part of what this life in the Spirit, walking by the Spirit, looks like. Lived out in the congregation. Here's also what it looks like. We bear one another's burdens. And then in verse 3, Paul tells us, if we think, we start thinking that we're something, when we're nothing, not only do we deceive ourselves, but here's what we better do. We better examine our own work. Here's what might be confusing in this passage, and we really didn't have time to get into it during that sermon. Paul says in verse 2, bear one another's burdens. He says in verse 5, each one will bear his own load. Which is it, Paul? Do we bear one another's burdens or do we bear our own load? Part of the key to understanding this is to recognize this word burdens and this word load are two different words. That will help give some clarity and insight here. So the word burdens has with it the idea of a troubled heaviness a troubled heaviness those trials and tribulations that come along as part of everyday living those challenges and difficulties, we would recognize that God allows, even ordains, those trials and tribulations that come along as part of everyday living that, that are a weight. They weigh us down. It's a, it's a troubled heaviness. And here's the great news, brothers and sisters. We don't bear that weight alone. First of all, and most importantly, we have God, who is our strength and our refuge, our shelter, a very present help in trouble. And then also, we have the gift of brothers and sisters in Christ who can come along and help bear those burdens and shoulder those burdens. And Paul says, 
Here's what it looks like living out life in the Spirit, led by the Spirit in the congregation. We bear each other's burdens. This word load in verse 5 describes freight loaded up onto a ship headed for a destination. Uh, we might think of it this way, cargo headed for a destination. I think in the context, this word load doesn't connect with this word burdens. The word load connects with, connects with this word work. Each one must examine his own work. Each one will bear his own load. The word work and the word load are connected here. So what is the work we are to examine? We examine our lives to see the work that we have accomplished, the work that we are doing, the work that we are involved in. And what we will find is that this work, if there's anything good and valuable and God-glorifying being accomplished, it's because the Holy Spirit has enabled it. We live by the Spirit, we walk by the Spirit, that produces fruit of the Spirit. It, this yielding to the Spirit produces work that is God-glorifying. In fact, Ephesians 2.10 tells us that God prepared good works. for us beforehand that we should walk in. We're not saved by good works. We're saved unto good works. And we find God has prepared beforehand good works for us to walk in. And so when we examine our own work, what we're going to find is, in one sense, we're nothing. Why? Because we haven't accomplished anything. Anything accomplished that's good, valuable, and God-glorifying, it's God has prepared it beforehand, it's the Holy Spirit who's enabled it. So then we don't have reason for boasting except to boast in ourself alone, which is to say, look what the Lord has done in me, instead of boasting in regard to another. So when Paul says each one will bear his own load, his own cargo, his own work, I think what he is emphasizing here is that we're not to be going about examining everyone else's work. You bear your own load. You focus in on what God has prepared for you to do. The fleshly temptation is going to be to go around examining everybody else's work and comparing in regard to another. And likely what that is going to produce is us being boastful, well, I'm doing my work better than they're doing theirs or challenging one another to say, well, you're not doing it right. You should be doing it different. You could be doing it better. But in the flesh, we would challenge one another. Walking by the flesh would lead us to examine others' work and envy one another. Look what they get to do, and I don't get to do that. So when Paul says, bear his own load, each one will bear his own load, I think what he is emphasizing is simply you, you focus in on the good works God has prepared for you to do. And instead of boasting in regard to another, we will... We will have reason for boasting in ourselves alone, which is to say, look at what the Lord has done. Well, I hope that brings some clarity to what might be a confusing section here. Remember, beloved ones, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. That's seen even in the good works he's prepared beforehand for you to do. But you can discover that plan and purpose in his word and until we can be together next time, may you know God's rich blessings upon your life.